If you've tried to buy RAM lately, you know the pain. Thanks to the huge increase of AI data centers, memory prices have absolutely skyrocketed, leaving gamers watching their build budgets, frankly, evaporate. It's getting to the point where we're having to get a bit creative to get our systems online without selling a kidney. And this got us thinking about compromises. We've always been told that dual channel memory is mandatory for gaming performance. But does that rule still hold up in 2025 with DDR5, especially on the AM5 platform? If you manage to snag a deal on a single high capacity stick, or just want to buy one now to save cash and add another later, are you actually ruining your frame rates? Well, to find out, we took this single 32 gig stick of 6000 megahertz CL40 DDR5 and pitted it directly against a dual channel kit of two 16 gig sticks running at the exact same speeds. We wanted to see if the point still stands in terms of dual channel memory, or if you can get away with a single channel stick to weather the pricing storm. But as always, before we get into that, here's a quick word from this video sponsor. One this and take one, action. The Arctic MX-7 Ultimate Performance Thermal Paste, made to meet the... Wait, car. You really want me to read this? Yes. Just read the lines. It's not exactly sexy and exciting, is it? I mean, it's thermal paste. Who's actually going to buy this? Everyone. Please just read the lines. Okay. The Arctic MX-7 Ultimate Performance Thermal Paste, made to meet the highest demands in terms of performance, application, and safety. Thanks to its new formula, MX-7 achieves even lower thermal resistance and a measurable performance increase, whether it's used on desktop CPUs, GPUs, laptops, and even console processors. Available in two, four, and eight gram packages, there's something for everyone. And they come in a new syringe design, making it easier to see exactly how much you've used. Grab yours today to keep your frame rates high and your temperatures low. And cut. Good job. You got bar. Thanks. That MX-7 stuff actually sounds pretty good. I'm guessing I get a free sample, right? No. Go online and buy it, sir. Hmm. What we pay is that for? Buy yours by clicking the link in the description below. So why would you even consider a single stick? Well, the second-hand market's a strange place right now. You might find someone selling a single 32 gig stick that they pulled from a high-end workstation. Or maybe a seller on eBay is splitting a 64 gig kit because they know the individual stick is easier to shift to a budget conscious buyer than a massive dual channel kit. In these cases, you could actually potentially save a significant chunk of change compared to buying a brand new dual channel kit at current retail prices and getting you up and running for less. Now, the big question is whether that saving is a false economy. If you stick a single module into a high performance rig, are you effectively putting a limit on your CPU? Well, to answer this properly, we didn't just test a budget chip. We threw both of these scenarios at the Ryzen 9700X, the 9800X 3D, and the 9950X, all at 1080p where memory bottlenecks usually show their ugly face the most. We wanted to see if the architecture of the 9000 series handles memory bandwidth differently, and if the results are going to be significant between a typical dual channel kit or a somewhat more obtainable single channel setup. To test, we put this all into play on an MSI MPG X870E carbon Wi-Fi with an RTX 5090 Founders Edition to eliminate any GPU bottleneck. For the memory, we used a single stick of Apesa Nox 32 gig 6000 MHz CL40 memory for our single channel tests and an XPG Lancer Blade 32 gig dual channel kit for our other tests. As the timings are wildly different on these kits, we did normalize the timings and sub timings to be the same for both scenarios to give an overall fair test. Now, one thing I will say that was, let's say, immediately apparent, though I'm sure there's a level of some form of biased placebo effect, but the single channel setup did seem sluggishly slow to me when booting into Windows and just doing simple tasks like opening Steam or other software to record frame rates, for instance. Again, part of this may be the placebo effect, but it's definitely something that I wanted to highlight. So with all that out of the way, let's get into those glorious benchmarks. Kicking things off with Counter-Strike 2 and on both the 9700X and 9800X 3D, the difference is negligible at just 2% in the averages and 3% in the 1% lows on both. Though it is worth noting that this is in favour of the dual channel kit in both situations. The 9950X however sees a bigger difference with 9% more performance in favour of the dual channel kit in the averages and 8% better in the lows. Regardless, if you're playing CS2, the frame rates we saw, albeit because we're utilizing an RTX 5090, sees frame rates well in excess of 300 FPS. So actually feeling any difference is kind of out the window anyway. 
As we move on to Cyberpunk, the differences do increase with the 9950X seeing a 16% increase in the averages over the single channel setup and a 22% increase in the 1% lows, showing that dual channel does help to smooth things out quite drastically. The 9800X 3D doesn't see as big of a difference, mainly down to the 3D V cache not being so reliant on memory, but still packs 9% more performance when switching to the dual channel kit and a 15% increase in the 1% lows. Then on the 9700X, we again see a bigger difference of 14% in the averages and 22% again in the lows. And if using a lower end GPU, this could actually make quite a sizable difference. In Spider-Man 2, the 9950X sees our biggest change so far with 27% faster frames on the dual channel kit compared to the single channel stick, now coming in at 131 FPS. But the bigger talking point is the 1% lows, which sees the dual channel setup giving us another 30% more performance compared to the single stick. Again, the 9800X 3D sees a lower variance of just 11% in the averages and 13% in the lows. And again, this is down to the 3D V cache not being as reliant on memory as non 3D V cache CPUs. Then the 9700X sees a slightly higher 13% in the averages, but the key point on this one is the 27% faster frames in the 1% lows, which again is a pretty hefty difference that can lead to an overall smoother gameplay. As we move on to Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we see the 9950X dual channel setup coming in with 9% faster frames in the averages and 17% more in the lows, while the 9800X 3D actually suffers its first defeat to the tune of 5% in the averages and 2% in the lows. Thinking that this was an anomaly, we did retest and garnered the same result, and this is likely down to the way that the game is made. And while the 3D V cache does help to push performance, the lack of reliance on memory has no major effect, which is just above what we'd class as room for margin of error anyway. Then the 9700X sees the bigger gain moving to the dual channel kit of 11%, but more impressive than that is our biggest difference yet with 42% more performance in the all important 1% lows. Lastly, in the Rift Breaker, we find the 9950X coming in with 19% more performance with the dual channel kit in the averages and 30% more in the lows. And this really comes down to the game utilizing everything that you throw at it and those huge amounts of cores and threads being eaten up by the game. We then see the 9800X 3D seeing a 6% increase in performance moving from a single stick to a dual channel kit and a further 15% on the 9700X. Though again, the standout point here is the 31% increase in performance in the 1% lows from 86 FPS all the way up to 113. To get a better picture of what this means overall, if we take a look at the overall averages across all five games, we can see that the 9950X is the CPU that benefits the most from the move from single channel to dual channel. This is because with 16 cores and 32 threads, the 9950X is much hungrier for data. When you essentially cut that bandwidth in half, you're creating a sizable bottleneck where those cores are left waiting for instructions, which is why we see the double digit drops. In contrast, the 9800X 3D is the least affected at just a 3% difference, proving that its 3D V cache is doing a good job of masking that memory deficiency by keeping more data on the chip itself, which is essentially what the X3D lineup was produced to do, and why they are so beastly for gaming, because it keeps the data closer to where it needs to be without having to fetch it every time. Then the 9700X falls in the middle, lacking the cache to hide the issue, but not having enough cores to completely choke the single channel bus like the flagship 9950X does. We do still see a 9% increase in performance in the averages, but a very healthy 20% increase in the 1% lows. Along with the 6% increase in the lows on the 9800X 3D and 17% on the 9950X, this is arguably the most important metric. While we all love to see higher average frame rates, it's the 1% lows that actually determine how smooth a game feels to play. Seeing a 20% jump on the 9700X means you're effectively eradicating those micro stutters that can ruin a competitive moment. Now, when it comes to dual channel memory, it essentially raises that floor of the performance, meaning that the frame delivery is consistent and fluid, rather than just leaving your CPU hanging while waiting for data during the most intensive parts of the game. Now, it's really about bandwidth availability during those critical spikes. Averages is the steady gameplay where the data is predictable, but 1% lows happen when the game suddenly demands a massive chunk of data, like a new asset loading or a complex explosion. With single channel, that data gets stuck in a queue, causing a stutter, while dual channel is able to clear the queue twice as fast, keeping the frame pacing much tighter. So the big question, is it time to embrace the single life? Well, the benchmarks show a pretty clear picture. If you're building a no compromise rig with a flagship chip like a Ryzen 9 with oodles of cores and threads, like the 9950X, 
Going single channel is basically holding things back dramatically as you're leaving free performance essentially just on the table, specifically in those 1% lows that define the smoothness of the experience. However, for those eyeing up a 3DV cache-based CPU like the 9800X3D, it's a very different story. Thanks to that massive cache, the penalty for running a single stick is actually quite low. If you're in a pinch and spot a deal on a lone 32 gigabyte stick for a steal on eBay, or though less likely a retailer, you can pull the trigger knowing that it's not going to have a huge impact to your overall gaming experience. Then finally, there's the 9700X, which finds itself in a bit of a gray area. It doesn't have the core count to completely choke the bandwidth like the 9950X, but it also lacks the safety net of the 3DV cache found on the 9800X3D. This means you're gonna fill those hits to the 1% lows a lot more, resulting in a noticeably less consistent experience. It's what I'd class as a passable stopgap if you really have to, but unlike with the X3D chip, you'll likely be itching to add that second stick a lot sooner to just smooth things out, budget permitting, of course. The real dilemma solely lies down into pricing. If you're saving 10 or 20 bucks, just get the dual channel kit and just save yourself the headache. But if you do find a deal where a single high capacity stick is maybe 30 to 40% cheaper than a comparable dual channel kit, then that's where things get a lot more interesting. With some analysts predicting the memory pricing storm lasting well into 2027, buying one stick now to, I guess, get your foot in the door is infinitely better than just well, having no PC at all. You also have to consider the upgrade path. Buying a single 32 gig stick now leaves you with a kind of clear route to 64 gig of dual channel goodness later when you have the cash or when prices finally stabilize. If you settle for a cheap, low capacity dual channel kit now just to follow the rules, you're essentially buying e-waste that well, you have to replace entirely down the road. And this is also the case if you wanted a drop down capacity, for instance, a single 16 gig stick compared to two eight gig sticks in dual channel. Ultimately, Dual channel is still king, but single channel is not the death sentence it used to be, provided you have the right CPU to, of course, cushion that blow. And that's going to do it for this one. Hopefully this helps you figure out what choice to make in the market right now, because these memory prices are no joke. And let me know if you want to see this maybe on Intel, and if so, what platform. Maybe we'll do the Core Ultra series first, followed by 14th gen, and kind of work our way back maybe to... 12th gen? Uh, I don't know. Maybe even AM4 too. If you guys watch it, we'll make it. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, a like and a sub to the channel would be amazing. Also, if you love what we do, then you can help support us over on Patreon. You get a ton of cool goodies, including exclusive behind the scenes content, access to a lot of our testing data, and so much more. The link is as always down below. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.